name is Richard F. Lyle, and you're watching a video on the art of line perspective. It won't be long if you're painting outside before you come across a building and you want to put a building in your painting. Well, you have to be able to draw the building before you can paint the building. You have to learn line perspective to draw a building. There's just no way around it. So this video is going to help you learn how to do line perspective. There are two types of line perspective, one point or two point. This is one point perspective that you're looking at. One point perspective is easier than two point perspective and we will start with one point perspective. This is two point perspective. As you can see, it works very well with more complex buildings, more complex subjects, and we need to see depth to two directions, not just one direction. One point perspective is easier to learn, it's easier to use, and there's nothing wrong with it. I use one point perspective all the time if it's appropriate for the situation. One point perspective, the first thing you have to do is put in your horizontal line and then block in your first or your closest flat surface of the building or object you're going to be drawing. Here you can see I marked the boxes, the end plane of the building I'm going to put in. With one point perspective, all horizontal lines are horizontal and all vertical lines are vertical. But all lines going to the right go to a vanishing point. That little mark off to the right there is your vanishing point. So, let's draw in those lines, all to the vanishing point, all four corners of the box, all sharp edges. Now, some people wouldn't draw these lines in the back because you can't see through the walls and stuff like that. But I drew all the lines in at first, and I can always erase the lines that are, you don't see. I would also like to say that the vanishing point does not have to be on the right. It can be on the left or the right. In this case, it's to the right, so all the lines going to the right go to the vanishing. Now it's time to put the back of the building in. So you have to decide where it is. And you look at the end and the front of the building, and you decide what the proportions are. So in, let's say this building the end is one third of what the front looks like. So then I put the line about two thirds back. And remember, your vertical lines are always vertical, horizontal lines are always horizontal. So your back line is going to be vertical. Now it's time to put a roof on this building. You do that by putting an X from the end box that we drew. And at that center X, you draw a vertical line up through there. And then for the peak, that's another one of those visual things you have to do by percentage. So let's say it's one third of the, of the height of the building. So I got two thirds at the bottom and one third above. I put a little mark there where you see a seven there. You put that mark there and you draw that line to the vanishing point and that sets the peak for the roof. Now the slope lines of the roof are all done from that point you go to the two corners and then these two lines your back slope and your front line slope is just in parallel. Now we're going to put some doors in this garage. We'll start with the end. As is one point perspective, that garage door, and we're going to have it in the middle of the building, is a perfect box. You just draw in another box, the 
the size of the door. Again, to figure out the size of these doors, I'm going to use proportions. The, the garage door, is top of the garage door is about half the height of the building. So I draw a line halfway up to the peak of the roof. That's the top of the garage door. This, the, the door for the people to get in is about half the height of the, the front. So halfway up, I draw the face of the, uh, the top of the door. Simple as that. Don't forget the top of that door slopes to the vanishing point. So points E and H there go to the vanishing point. Now it's time for the windows. Now the windows, they're all proportionally the same on this building. And they're about the same as the door. So the back of the door is about one quarter the whole distance from the front of the building to the back of the building. So I use that as my new vertical line. Then for the window, I take the back of the window and that's going to be one quarter the distance from the back of the door and to the building. Now windows aren't as wide as the door, so instead of being like the door is more than a half of the space, I'm going to have it like one third of the space. Now, the next window, I do the same thing. I, the new line is the back of that first window that I came to. Now I go one quarter of that distance to the end of the building, put in that back of the window, and then one third the distance of the overall, I block it in. And I just repeat this all the way for all the windows, all the way back. Sounds pretty simple. So now I'm going to erase all the vanishing lines, all the guidelines, I got a shade in the building, different shades for the roof and the, 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 the end and the face and the windows and I'll even do the floor. So I'll show you why the door is open so you can see inside the building so you can see the, the floor. That's why I always put in all the lines in. That line in this case is now visible so I can easily shade it in. So here is the building with all the lines erased. Now I'm going to put some landscaping around the building. I'm going to put some trees in the background, put the sidewalk in, put, the, put a driveway into it, make it look like a, a little landscape here. It doesn't, didn't come out too bad. Looks pretty good for a one point perspective. Worked fine for this building. So now I'm going to talk about the perspective of figures, people. It also works for animals like cows and horses and stuff. I'm going to start with the figure by the door. It's easy to figure out the height that person is, you know, you can always walk through a door so they're shorter than a door. Most people have like a foot above their head. So I drew this person in unlocking the door. Now remember, horizontal lines are always horizontal. So I just have to draw a line out from the feet of him to where I'm going to put the next figure in that same plane. And from the top of his head to the top of the head of his friend here. Then I draw that figure in. Then I draw from his head to the point of the vanishing point and I can draw in the figures. Now, the, the figures that's on the sidewalk because they're in the same plane same line. So I have this guy's wife and a little little child standing there. Notice the child, the legs are short and the child's a lot shorter. Most people are always about the same height. They are, they're always around you know, five and a half feet to six and a half feet. That's only one head. So the distance doesn't vary that much. Now this one child's out in the grass some, so I drew, drew a horizontal line out where I was going to put that per child, and then I drew that child in. And that's how the figures work. Pretty easy, isn't it? Works really good. If you have a cityscape or something like that where you have a lot of people, one point perspective sure makes things a lot easier. I'd like to add something about putting figures in the painting. If I have less than a dozen people in the painting. I always like it to be a 
an odd number. That way, the viewer feels like there's someone he can join in with and he can talk to. It's more friendly of a picture. Now that you know how to do a one-point perspective drawing, you need to do a lot of drawings until you know where every line goes without thinking. You don't need to be guessing which line goes where when you're out there working. Have fun and watch for our next video, Two Point Perspective, which is part two. I should be coming out with that in about a week. Bye. Have a nice time. And don't be afraid to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.